Only News 3 looks at a market that researchers describe as exploding. Vapor or e-cigs represent a $3 billion industry worldwide. But what are the health implications? A new study at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine is trying to find that out. And Dave Delosier is here with what that study is looking at. Yeah, Michelle, you know, the opinions by lawmakers on how to regulate vaping could not be more all over the map. There have been laws and ordinances proposed to ban vaping and others to protect the right to use and sell vaping supplies. Uh, with that said, everyone seems to agree on one thing, and that is that more research is needed. Unfortunately, scientifically, we are way behind the curve. Dr. Doug Joranby has been researching tobacco use and addiction for more than 30 years. While much is known about the health risks of tobacco, vaping is another story. There's a lot of anecdotal pros and cons out there, but when it comes to uh, evidence that meets the scientific standards, we, we have far too little. Other than we know the use of e-cigarettes is just exploding. Out of public health concerns, cities like Madison and others are regulating vaping the same as cigarettes. Proponents of vaping say it is a safe alternative that helps people stop smoking. Dr. Joranby says initially vaping seemed a better alternative. So initially it seemed like there was no comparison. As we started to look at things more carefully in lab settings, though, we found some concerning factors. To get a definitive answer, the UW Center for Tobacco Research and Intervention is beginning a five-year, $3.7 million study of e-cigarettes. They will follow 400 participants in the study, some who smoke only cigarettes and some who both smoke and vape. And we're going to follow them over several years, uh, looking at all kinds of health outcomes, including their exposure to some potential biomarkers for cancer risk. The hope is, while it took decades to determine the health risks of smoking, answers about vaping can be learned quicker. There may be a time delay and that's why we're trying to look at some things that may be more sensitive markers so that we we don't have to wait 20 or 30 40 years to say whoops this is not a good idea. Now Dr. Joranby believes tentative answers from their research may be available in just a few years. The study is being funded by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration which has made this a very high priority item and Michelle in addition to the work being done by UW there's other research institutions that are looking at this as well. Very fascinating stuff though nonetheless. All right thank you Dave. You bet.